formless tantra how we prepare for a magical relationship all relationships are tantric in a sense or at least they can be formless tantra was coined by a friend to describe the way I approach the experience of Tantra using everyday life, everyday relationships. When she came to me, she expected training in various rituals and techniques and exercises, pointing to sexual ecstasy and from there spiritual bliss. She expected tense, multi, intense multi-sensory meditations the invocation of goddesses and gods, setting a space, possibly various magical tools, initiations, maybe sexual into secret knowledge. Instead, I listened and we talked about her life. We exchanged energy and power and explored its dynamics in our relationship as we lived it. That relationship has been going for decades it is non-sexual and won't ever be anything else. The essence of Tantra is what I am offering and exploring. There is secret knowledge, but it is that Tantra, its energy and power, is not exotic and occult. It is here and now in everyday ecstasies. It is in the simple realisation that the experience of the spirit in everyday life is a matter of point of view. Like so many insights, it is secret because it is too obvious. Tantra is how we are made up. We are our relationships, both internally and externally. Your hands touch your nose. That's a relationship. Your ears to your head, your head to your feet, your knees to your shoulders. These are physical relationships. You are born into a family. They give you emotional relationships and at one point very physical things, so they fed you. And then it goes on and on, out and out, to even to the idea of Big Bangs and, and the planets and astrology, all of these, the relationships of our lives. There are some approaches which believe the external world is the enemy. They take a warrior's approach and believe the devil is in um, the uh, is a bringer of delusion, the the lord of this world, as they say in Christianity. And Maya was the tempter of Buddha, of that external world and sexuality. Tantra does not believe that. Tantra believes the two, the external, the internal, the right and the left, uh, the male and the female, are of equal standing. I don't think we should use masculine and feminine energy. We should use the warrior, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Tantra's rituals, the breathing, spiritual and physical awareness the, and control, are great and useful. I teach them. But it is the mindfulness shared in relationship that is the core. It is the center in the sense that it gives meaning to all the other games we play. Ecstatic sexual and spiritual experiences of Tantra, so many people focus on, are natural outgrowths of profound, honest, deep connections when you share your spiritual journey with your partners. Those partners may be lovers, friends, mentors, gurus, and even workmates. When people teach mindfulness, they usually teach it as an individual practice, not a shared one. Tantra, at its most practical core, is shared mindfulness. Each partner undertakes to acknowledge the prominent role they play in each other's lives, both inner and outer. After all, if you're intimate with someone, you have to take them into account with any activity that you do. And so they will play a role and they become part of your inner life as much as you're as being something that's a, someone that's around you in that outer world. We seek to authentically experience and explore the reality of each other. Many people will have 
deep-seated values embedded in their bodies, their subconscious and unconscious, you might say their soul. Very often expressed as emotional responses that may be unexpected. We have expectations and presuppositions that only come out in rare situations, like the vulnerabilities of profound authentic love or when we are attacked by someone. Mindfulness is the process of intentional awareness of the sensations, emotions, thoughts and feelings and their effect on our experiences and actions as an act of loving acceptance, respect and care. It is greater than tolerance because that can mean just putting up with the bits of you that are uncomfortable rather than truly embracing all of who you are and who your partners are. All the great traditions, with few exceptions, start the great journey from the earth plane of your existence. The earth plane is the here and now daily life, not just the simple sensations, but also the emotional connections, work, friendship and with strangers. If you are to be trusted with a direct relationship with yours and or others experience of spirit, their whole point of view on the world, then how you conduct yourself in the mundane ordinary world is the test and the training ground. How you love your romantic partners in everyday ordinary life points to how you love yourself internally. How you negotiate and share energy and power at work with friends <coughs> and with your intimate relationships points to the way you'll relate to the spirit, to the goddesses and gods. How do we go about this? First we explore the power of the senses. The development of then we develop awareness of our experience of the moment and our relationships. With games that come from many different traditions. Though I call it formless, we still use the chakras as a structure. They allow us to be sure we explore all dimensions of who we are holistically. For example, we start by exploring the very fact that we are strangers rather than try to artificially create trust and intimacy. This is first chakra. How are you with strange situations and settings? With people you don't know. We exaggerate those feelings so as to clarify and demonstrate what mindfulness is by using real experience of the moment we are living. We help you to be aware of the way you draw your boundaries and your changing experience moment to moment. This helps you develop choice in the way you attract and push people away in drawing those boundaries. By the end of that, this very first exercise, paradoxically, you are actually really close to everyone. Then we explore what you want, second chakra, and how you get it, third chakra. Then explore the taking of action and the passions that motivate it versus what blocks you, fourth chakra. And while remaining sensitive to feedback and communication, through listening with your ears, your body, your feelings. Fifth chakra. Then, what does it all mean to who you are? Sixth chakra. And how do you relate to your higher power and empowered ways of dealing with unexpected acts of God? The seventh chakra. Each of these have a trinity of archetypal relationships. The lover, the warrior and the adversary. The lover is the intimate, sensuous, internally directed role. The externally directed warrior role sets boundaries and expresses your power for overcoming the adversary, that is, the blockages. To this end, we use psychodrama, ritual, shamanic dance, multi-sensory imagination in meditations, sensitivity games and experiences from yoga and esoteric or inner martial arts altered states like trance, 
discussion circles in an atmosphere of going trust and of course the mindfulness that I've uh, already described and talked about. As we get to know each other we track our changing feelings in the whole experience we are sharing. The aim is to have a direct experience of the transformative power of loving shared mindfulness. Through these, we reframe our experience of relationships, including sex, with us, with ourselves, and through this, all other relationships, including the more esoteric and intimate ones. And there are other videos that will give more details on the Trinity I mentioned and the theory and practice with the chakras.